Hi there. Today we're going to talk about uh, seize brakes on Hondas. Uh, this is a Honda CB, CB500T that I had in a couple of weeks ago and you may remember it had a horrible fairing on and some bars uh, that were kind of yay high. So I've changed these for something that you wouldn't need to wear a red nose and uh, long shoes to ride it down the road on. So it looked a bit better now anyway. Cables, are, the pipes and things are still all too long but I'll need to shorten those down. So uh, this has got a stuck brake and it's really common in these Hondas. Um, these, this brake was fitted to pretty much everything over 350cc that Honda made from about 71 I suppose um, but I'll stand corrected on that of course as normal um, it's not a great brake uh, but it, it, it has the benefit of being a very simple brake so how does it work? you mat a cylinder up here and these pipes run down here to here and that's your brake caliper there um, the principle of hydraulics is very straightforward and it can be encapsulated in four words. You cannot compress liquid. So, all things being equal, if you move liquid here, if you put pressure on liquid here, something down there has to move as long as there's no contaminants or air in the system. So, it's pretty straightforward. Um, this one here has been seized and I've had to back it off there. Um, but what I'm going to do now is peel this back and we're going to have a look in there and uh, very often when you get these old bikes the brake fluid either either there's none in it or it's turned into this kind of horrible waxy emulsion that kind of clogs up everything or quite often it's a, um, a kind of coffee coloured muck that's nothing like brake fluid at all so why have I got gloves on? Brake fluid's hydroscopic and it sucks all the um, moisture at your fingers and your fingers will feel horrible and it's just really nasty stuff to deal with so I'd just rather wear gloves when I'm doing this kind of stuff so first thing is um, I'm going to undo that let's have a look in first and have a look at the um, at the brake fluid and see what it looks like in there so let's just have a look and you can see actually that looks all right. There's not much of it in. That's fine. But uh, we'll put some in, it and we'll keep we'll keep plenty of brake plenty of brake fluid in there because when you've got an old cylinder like this, assuming it's good, um, when you get air into it once, they often don't like to bleed properly, um, and it would need a new one. So if it does need a new one, it's not the end of the world. It's about forty or fifty pounds, uh, and I'm just one of those that rightly or wrongly. I never mess around with the air kits in, they're just not worth doing. I'd much rather just put a new one on. So what I'll do, I'll leave that off just now, just for a second, and I will put some brake fluid in it. A couple of these here, which one's open? This one. I'll just pop a little brake fluid in it, just to make sure that it doesn't run out and get, it doesn't get any air in. Okay. All right, what I'm going to do now is crack this at that point and just see if it lets fluid out or not. Let me just move this so the camera can see it. Right. Now when I... The camera might try and find me now, I hope not, because it'll go out of focus. But anyway... If I crack this, this is rock solid as you can see. Now, I don't know if it's seized in there or if the pipe's collapsed internally and that happens with old pipes as well or if it's seized at the bottom. It may be all three but first off let's have a look here. I'll just get a piece of cloth to wrap around that. I'll have to keep near it. Best thing to do this is with the fuel tank off as well because um, if it gets on the paint you're screwed. Right, ready. So let's just undo that. I just well, that's good. See that's quite a full um a, a full stroke of brake fluid out. So that tells me that the master cylinder's good. So first off we've won a coconut there. So what I'm gonna do now is crack it there. Now I could crack it there where the pipe just joins that little T piece. You can see a T piece just there behind the that cable. So I'll crack that there now and see if once again, yeah, we've got a full squat of fluid out of that. Just, I will just try once more. The headlight's loose. You can, oh, just hang up. See, I'm just releasing that so it doesn't suck any air up 
you know, when I uh, when the pipes open. So here we go again. I'll just put a wee bit of pressure on, and yeah, that's good. So that tells me the master cylinder is good and that pipe's good. So so far we're doing all right, but we've got to find something that's wrong in a moment. So let's just move you back and make sure you're focused. And you're not cutting my head off, as happens so often. Okay, so now I'm going to come down here and I could undo that joint there with this flexible pipe um, joins the steel pipe there. But I am just going to crack this. I should use a brake pipe spanner, but I don't have to have one handy. It was stolen, believe it or not. And that is still rock solid. I don't know if you can see that. That is still not moving there. I'll just show you. That is still not moving. So that tells me the problem, or a problem, is certainly within that pipe there. Now you can also see I've undone those nuts there because this is also seized. Now the brake caliper is seized, but I need a new pipe as well. There. I am just going to undo that. I'm sure that won't be at fault there, the T piece. No, that's fine. It's going to be fluid piece. So that tells me that pipe there, that pipe there has collapsed inside. So I need to get a new one of those. Not a big deal, under about £30, pounds. I'll get one made up cheaper, but I'll just buy, buy a, a proper one for the bike. So now, um, that is still seized, the caliper, because if I tighten this up, I just know that wheel is not going to want to move. Just about moving. But that brake is stuck. So we'll undo that. These don't take any doing at all. To get off. I'll pop this off. Let's just put them. I'll also do I will put a brake pipe clamp on here. Yeah, so this is a brake pipe clamp. This fella here, that's a brake pipe clamp. And I'm just gonna pop that round the top pipe so and that will stop air getting drawn in from down here. So let's pop that round there. And so when I take, it shouldn't matter because I know this pipe collapsed inside anyway, but I want to stop air getting back to the master cylinder. As you can see there, it's a mark of the, the half wet again. We've got one with a washer on and one without. It's all quite normal when you get these old bikes. There's always somebody been in there before you. People that maybe don't know what they're doing. Okay, and as you can see, I put that back together. Look how dry and horrible that is. So we'll clean that up before we put it on and make sure that the next guy that comes along the next guy that comes along actually gets an easier ride because it'll all be nice and clean and free okay what I would normally do is following the, the principle that I just spoke about a few minutes ago of you can't compress um, you can't be unable to compress liquid if these pipes had been good I would have literally, I would have pumped that piston out with the hydraulics, but what I'm going to do now, I'll take this brake pad out, I'll pop it in the vise, and then I'll probably try and force it out with compressed air, which I have here. It may come out. Um, let's give it a whirl anyway. So just give me a minute to get set up doing that, and uh, we'll carry on. Okay, we've got the, um, the caliper off now, and as I said, the 
a very simple caliper, just fixed by a couple of bolts. Um, this is the pipe that we thought was collapsed. And I'm going to take my life in my hands and try and blow through this for you. Um, piece of cloth, where's that gone? Right. <coughs> that's not passing anything at all, so that's the problem, that's collapsed inside, or that is a problem. So, what I'd love to have done, if the pipes were good, is pump this out with the hydraulics. I'd pump this out with the hydraulics, but given that pipe's collapsed, I can't. So I'm going to try and get out with compressed air, and this can get messy. So, and it might not come anyway. So, a bit of this, and then we'll do this. I'll move that. Are we? Are you ready? Let's try it. Well. Well. So that is one that needs pumping out. I could try first. What I'll do is, shame I can't get that brake pad out, but what I'll do, I'll press that in first. Oh no, that, that pad's going to come out. Let's try to move. I think that's trying to move. If I can get that, I'll squeeze that in a bit. Wow, that is so, so seized. That's going back in now, as you can just see with the fluid bouncing all over the bench. A nasty colour. Okay, that's as far as it will go. So now, I'm going to try... Now, I know that it's gone in, it might come out a bit with the compressed air. Let me switch this back on. I've got that nipped. I've got that caliper nipped in a position where it won't stop the um, the piston from moving because now I'm going to try the compressed air and I'm also going to try a little bit of shock on it while I'm doing it and that might just... This is a hide face hammer. It's like a juggler. This is a hide faced or leather faced hammer. Leather, leather one side, copper the other. So I'm going to try the copper face and No, that's not going to come. I'm afraid that is going to have to be pumped out with hydraulics because it's not going to come out with compressed air. So, I may need to jury rig something up with the pipe that does work. Hi all, it's actually a couple of days since we uh, started to do this and in the meantime, you may be able to see with the correct pipe fitted from the master cylinder down to the, the little T-piece down there and we now have the correct pipe fitted here. I had to get one of those and I couldn't rig anything up. So, I've connected the, the steel pipe up to the caliper and I'm just going to tighten that up now and we will use the master cylinder to pump out to pump out the piston. And it should come out without too much trouble. But first off, we'll release the caliper the, the brake clamp off there. I will just slacken that off just to get some fluid down to there. And I can use this to bleed it in this manner here so we don't get any air back into the master cylinder. So So I'm gonna clamp in that there, so get that press there and just clamp that. Another stroke, and you can see the air coming out. There's got quite a lot, a lot of uh, 
new pipe to fill. I think we're nearly there. There we go. So we'll just nip that up now. Here getting back in. I can release that now. Get the position where you can see it. Okay, let's pump that out. They're keen to go. Well, let's keep trying. You can see that coming out now. And I've got to make sure that I don't let the air get in from the top. coming out quite well now. This is the point at which you let air in. Of course. Yeah, that's coming out well now. This is following the principle that compressed air is all well and good, but you can compress air. And of course, you can't compress fluid. Make sure this is topped off. And I am going to put something underneath that. Because when this comes out, there's going to be a god awful mess underneath it. So let's just get something to pop under it. And that's really coming easily now. And you can see all that horrible waxy gunk. I think I mentioned that previously. And there we are. So I'll just put that clamp round there now, and that will stop air rushing back to the master cylinder. There we go. And now we've got a really solid cable for there. You can see how nasty that is inside there. But that'll clean up. So let's just take this off now. And we can clean this up. Okay, for the purposes of this, this will do for now. Ah, told you about the god awful mess this stuff makes. Right, I'll just take this off now and we'll put get this in the vise and get it cleaned up. Okay, we've got this um, brake caliper off. Actually, it's not, it's not in as bad a state as it might have been. Um, the piston, which is usually, or which can be pretty badly marked, is actually not marked at all. There's, there's no there's no rust on it, there's just a lot of crud on it, so that'll clean up really easily. Um, looking into the caliper itself, you can see it's actually just pretty dirty and grotty inside. And the problem, if anything, has been the build-up of rust uh, and crud all around the edge of the brake pad. So that'll clean off really quite easily. I may just put some new pads in, but for the purposes of this, we'll clean this one up and we'll put the brake back together and I'll show you that we can get it working really quite easily without um, masses of expense or masses of, uh, of effort. So, first off, I'll, I'll clean out all that nasty brake fluid so, as we can, so we've got something to work with. And it's really common that, you know, when the brake fluid has been in for eons as this has, um, it loses its uh, properties and you can really, you can often get a really good break up from a spongy one just by changing the fluids. So, you know, it's good policy anyway when you get, when you get a, an old bike like these, just change the brake fluid and you'll find you've got a stronger brake. 
quite apart from anything else. And it's just good policy. So what I'm going to do now, I'll just hold that in the vise so in the prison where you can see it. And we'll get a little screwdriver in and we'll fish out that. I'll do it like this. And we'll fish out the the seal. Actually, I have a new one in a packet here, which I'm going to pop in afterwards. So, but meantime, we're going to clean up the well that that seal sits in, in there. So that when I put the new seal in, it sits right in the bottom of that well and there's no pinch points around the edge of the, the piston. So I'll give that another wee wipe inside. All the time wearing my gloves because, as I've said before, this is horrible stuff. As I mentioned before, these were never a great break, but they were a necessary step from bikes with what are perceived today as relatively modest power outputs that were using twin leading shoe brakes. Um, and they brought these bikes up that were seen to have, you know, for the time, very big power outputs. Uh, but the brakes weren't great. And this is one of the... This is not one of the better examples. But uh, there's not a one in producing brakes that were pretty, pretty weedy. And in fact, pull down bikes that were getting more powerful and much heavier. And uh, subjecting much bigger load on the brake systems. But the necessary step to take us from twin leading shoe brakes to brakes with the kind of efficacy that we see, uh, or that we saw a few years later. You know, the brakes on this, for example, which is a 79, um, sorry, 78 GS750, are immeasurably better you know, but the pace of uh, development during the 60s and 70s was nothing short of brutal okay i'm going to keep cleaning out that well like this you know and i've got a little flat bladed screwdriver somewhere which i usually use for this but i can't find it right now i've got this one which isn't quite fine enough but this is actually pretty clean but often you get a load of crud in there, uh, which will be sitting underneath the seal. We'll just clean that out. And then, I'll keep doing that afterwards. But that's, you know, kind of the principle of what I'm doing. And now, I want to get all that corrosion. That you can see there, off the inside of that. Now, a braver man than me might put something that rotates very quickly around there and screw that off, but I'm not a fan of asbestos any more than anyone else, so I'm going to use some Scotch Bright, which is gentle enough, and I will get that out. So. I'll move that out. If I turn the camera around facing that way, there'll be so much light coming out of the garage, it kind of. Uh, takes away your view. I've got a wee sharp blade I can get in here somewhere to get that off. This is not the one I meant but it'll suffice. So I'll just get that. And get that heavy rust and crud off. I can polish it up in a moment. You can see what I'm getting out of there. I'm going to move that just so you can see a bit better. Sorry guys if that's a bit too bright. You'll need to suffer it. Right. You can see there that rust and crud coming off there quite easily. get the worst of it off and I'll give it a wee polish in a minute so that's nice and clean for the the piston to sit in for the brake pad to sit in Bright on it now. <laughs> right, 
Right, you get the idea, I'm sure. Okay, let's have a look at the piston. Onto the piston here, and you can see it's covered in this nasty waxy residue. Once again, really common with old brakes. What's also common is for these to be quite rusted. Usually surface rust, and you can sometimes just polish it out. But in this one, I shall not need to. A little mark there. But I think that'll just come off with some scotch bright. I'll just set that there and just rub it gently. I'm going to put this back together. I'll just use a bit of brake fluid to lubricate it. Right, now we've got all the crud around the, the brake pad. So once again, I'll start to finish it with my modelling knife. I'm just getting the heavy stuff off here, as you can probably see. Now it's this that was stopping it, this that was binding it in the disc, in the um, caliper. So once this is off, I'm going to polish this, the edge of this brake pad up. We'll find this will probably slide in and out really quite easily. I'm rushing this a bit because you guys are here. Okay, let me just... Right, put that on there. And our old friend Scotch Brake will just give that a wee rub. Don't know where you can see it. And you can see, actually, it's still a bit grubby, but it's immeasurably better than it was a minute ago. So, I'll do now. I'll pop this in there. A little bit of cloth, cloth around it. And, use some memory tape. Give it a wee polish. Once again, I'm going to carry on doing this in a moment, but you absolutely get the get the, the idea of what I'm trying to achieve here. And look at that now, loads better already. I will carry on doing a bit more, get around that bit too, and clean up that little recess. But you know exactly, you can see what I'm, exactly what I'm trying to achieve. I'm going to carry on cleaning this up in there, give that a bit more polish. Then I'm going to pop a new seal in and put it back together. So we'll do that in a moment. Okay, I've got this cleaned up now. You can see that's looking a lot better. As is the brake pad. Nice and clean. I put, I put the thinnest smear of copper, copper grease on there just to stop any corrosion going on it in future. I have the new seal, which I've just taken out of its little bag, and it looks like it's pre-lubed, so I'm going to pop that in. I would just use a tiny smear of 
brake fluid to lubricate it otherwise. It'll just sit in like that really quite nicely. And then you press it in and I usually run it around with something with a, a round edge just to make sure it's pressed right in. Just to have a clean screwdriver will suffice. Okay, just put press right in. Then I'm going to lube up the piston. Just with it as again a tiny bit of brake fluid. I'll just pop that in. And that should just slide right home. And that just slid all the way home like that, as easy as you like. You saw how easily that went in. So now I'm going to pop the brake pad back in. Once again, we've got that tiny wee, I'm going to give that a wipe. And I'll pop a tiny smear of copper grease around there. And it's just to stop corrosion starting. And I won't stop it forever. I've rubbed these faces flat on some Scotch Brite on the flat bench. So now a tiny wee bit of copper slip. I'm just going to pop that in there, just a tiny smear, that's almost too much, it's just so that there's a covering on all the faces there, that's actually too much, I'll, I'll get some out with a cloth. And that will just stop the start of any new corrosion. Okay, let's pop our piston in. Once again, there's a tiny smear of copper grease in the back of that. I've put something on the on the, that little sp spacer just to stop it. There we are. That brake should be super new. I will replace those pads, but for the purposes of what we're doing, that shows you've got a really nice free, um, a nice free brake now. So I'll stick it back on the bike. We'll bleed it up, and we'll see. And before we pop this together, we'll give these a nice little clean up. So that the next guy that follows me doesn't have to deal with nasty horrible stuff like this because there's no need and it's just kind of engineering good good manners so a bit of memory tape and we'll clean that up right well I just rotate that a bit a wee bit. And then we put on a little bit of this. And that's a tin of copper grease I've had forever. And it takes you a long time to get through it. But look, just a, a smear of that on there, that's actually far too much. Just a smear of that on the on the threads and on the the shank of that set screw means that will never seize again. So I'll do the other one and then I'll be nice for the next guy, won't it? I want if anything even a wee bit scabbier. Look better, and it's not hard to do, and it doesn't cost anything. And it's, just, it's just a nicer way to work, isn't it? Tiny wee smear of that on it. I mean, this is this is called copper slip, but I'm sure there are other other brands that are just as effective. So there we are. And that goes back together. They were lovely. Okay, we're ready to get this brake back on now. Pop that there. This is a floating, a 
floating caliper, so you're gonna make that nice and free. We can adjust that in a moment. It's always been there first, but never mind. So we'll get the bolts that we copper slipped up the other day. You can see they've got a nice film of copper slip on them. I'll tell you what we'll do. That's today's deliberate mistake. We'll put this on first. Because aligning it afterwards always much harder. Pop that in there, this in here, and bingo. Ready. And I'm going to take this back off afterwards and repaint it. Um, and I'll probably get some thinner washers than that on. Anal about washers, gotta be right. Okay, nip up the pipe here, and then we can release the, the clamp there. That'll stop it getting any air back, and then we'll just pump it through. Sorry for the mess, I would normally put a piece of pipe on that just to catch the mess. And just pump that brake out. As I say, I will take this caliper back off and paint it. But you can see now, let me just jack the bike up and I can show you this working. Okay, here we go. You can see now that brake bites and becomes free exactly as, we, as we'd hope. And it didn't take a lot of time or effort and it'll be fine. It'll get better actually the more we ride it. So I will take it out for a ride once I get the tank on it. And um, that'll be absolutely great. And you can see now, we've got a pretty good brake there already. Not as good as it'll be. I'm going to adjust it here and make sure that the free, the free play is right there. But I'm quite pleased with that. So now having had a bike with a seized front brake, we've got a brake that allows the right amount of freedom to rotate, but bites hard. Sounds worrying like my wife, doesn't it? Um, I'm going to put this back together now. I'll put the I'll put the tank and panels back on when they arrive this weekend. And if you behave yourselves, uh, that means if I can work out how to get my camera going without um, having to buy a GoPro, we'll take this thing out for a ride together and you can see how it goes. This is this is the same brake that was fitted to most Hondas from 1971 on, but the principles you've seen applied here would work on pretty much any any brake from any bike of any era. Uh, I've got a Kawasaki KZ650 that's got um, seized brakes, uh, twin brakes either side and they're similarly seized. We'll do those together as well, but you'll see the principles I used there will be exactly those which I've used here. Thanks for that guys and I'll talk soon. Anybody want to buy a dog?